We ended the last video with the rejection of the continental drift, but Alfred Wegener was not really bitter. He had faith with the scientific community that later on, his continental drift theory will be accepted. And he was right. After several decades, his continental drift theory was finally accepted with an additional help, of course. And that help came in the form of Harry Hess. So the Harry Hess or Harry Hess is an American scientist which proposed the seafloor spreading phenomenon in 1962. So I have mentioned earlier that the existence of um, the mantle being semi molten material was not known until the Cold War, and that's the time of the 1960s. So during the 1960s, since two countries are preparing for battles, specifically underneath the oceans, then it is a good strategy to study what will be your eventual battlefield. So ships were sent underneath the ocean, submarines were sent to the bottom of the ocean to study it. And that's the first time that actually extensive studies has been funded um, to explore underneath the ocean. So with that opportunity, scientists have found the Carlsberg Carlsberg Ridge. So in November 1962, HMS Owen, that's the ship, made a detailed, detailed magnetic survey over a central part of the Carlsberg Ridge as part of the International Indian Ocean Expedition. So they found uh, that in the Indian Ocean, which is between Africa and India, there is a here, okay, a ridge, okay, which is showing two plates moving apart from one another underneath the Indian Ocean. So a location so mysterious that nobody has seen before until the 1962 and then they found out that new plates are being made in that location. Okay, so the idea of seafloor spreading um, can be summarized with this principal thought. So the ocean floor moved like a conveyor belt carrying continents along with them. Seafloor spreading theory states that new ocean crust is being created at the mid-ocean ridges, which are large mountain chains underwater and destroyed at trenches. Okay. So the mid-ocean ridge here is the center. Okay. So three planes over here, that's the center. And the important part in that center, as I have mentioned earlier, is that magma... Uh, erupts from that location, although not in a very violent manner, but enough to create new plates. So near the ridge here, new plates are being formed and the old plates are being pushed to the side. So as new plates are being made in the ridges, old plates are being moved and the continents are moving along with the seafloor spreading. So the seafloor, literally, the Indian Ocean is liter literally getting wider. So it's spreading as new ocean con uh, new ocean plates are being made and with it, the continents are being pushed apart. So uh, that's a groundbreaking discovery considering that before the 1960s, they thought that the planet was constant and is in a completely solid state. Now they realize that even if it looks really solid that the surface of the earth looks really solid it's actually ever so constantly moving okay so the existence of several other undersea mountains were discovered so a map of the ocean floor was made during the world war ii okay so in addition the united states navy have uh further mapped out the ocean floor okay and then the, uh, the other ocean ridges have been discovered. So you can see here, um, here's the Philippines. Let's put an asterisk there. There is a mid-ocean ridge underneath Australia. That's why I mentioned earlier that o a Australia is moving upwards because um, a mid-ocean ridge is actually there pushing it upwards. Okay. In addition, here, between, between Africa and... Um, I think that's America and South America here. The Atlantic Ocean, there is a mid-ocean ridge in the middle. That's why there used to be one big 
apart or connected to one another, but now they are actually separated. Okay, so we were able to map out the mid-ocean regions. Okay, there. Okay, so that was this discussed. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier. We have in one part South America and one part Africa, and the ocean in between is continuously spreading apart due to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Okay, so again, the youngest part here is located nearest the ridge, while the older plates or parts of the plates are farther away from the ridge. Okay. So just more explanation so it's of the seafloor spreading phenomenon. Okay. So very significant because finally what the lacking ingredient in the theory of continental drift is finally pre provided. So in addition to the evidences provided by Alfred Wegener, so the matching of the map of the uh, different continents, the rock evidence, fossil evidence, plus the seafloor spreading, it has been finally solidified and accepted in the scientific community after several debates, of course. Um, after several debates in the scientific community, the, the scientists eventually realized that this is the this explains everything pretty much and has finally been accepted. Okay, so how can we be sure that seafloor spreading is true? It is true. Of course, they also provided evidences. So first, the very obvious one, molten material. So if you survey the mid-ocean ridges, you will find that molten material or magma has been cooling down in the ridges okay so the rock shape like pillows or rock pillow show that molten material has erupted again and again from cra cracks along the mid-ocean ridge and cooled quickly okay so evidences of magma erupting from the mantle towards the surface has been seen okay so locations like this um you will find magma um, slowly being pushed up into the surface. Then you also have magnetic striping. So, um, if you're not aware, in the Earth's history, our magnetic field have actually changed or our magnetic polarity is a better term. So, the magnetic polarity of our Earth has actually changed in the past. So currently, we have your North Pole and South Pole, but that's not always the case. There were instances wherein they were reversed. There were also instances where they are sort of, they were not completely reversed, but they have shifted a bit before returning back to its old position. If that is because our inner Earth is dynamic. So the inner, the inner core is solid but our outer core is sort of a semi-molten material as well so understandably that it will also move along with our asthenosphere so since the outer core is moving then some of the polarities will move so that can actually be detected with the um plates that we observe underneath the ocean so they did run um some tests underneath the ocean and they found that the ocean floor, since it has been made in different time scales, have recorded the shifting or the reversals in the magnetic field. Okay, so again, evidence number one, we had molten, molten material. Evidence number two, we had magnetic striping. And evidence number three, of course, ocean drilling samples. So just by being comparison of the age of rocks, so you have your ridges here, yes, okay, you have your ridges here, so this is magma, and then this is your ocean. If you uh, take samples here and here and compare them from one another, the ones nearest to the ridge will be younger, so these will be younger rocks in comparison to those that are farther away from the uh, ridges. Okay, so that 
uh, we'll stop our video here first since we have finally accepted the continental drift theory with the help of the uh, seafloor spreading phenomenon. And then we'll be discuss, discussing the modern day plate tectonics um, in the next video.